It says, secondly, if you look down at verse 2, it says, not only sound in faith, that's a healthy mind, but it says, sound in love. Do you know what the, the early church had? They had a tender-hearted love. They were sound in love. They were loving. In fact, when, when uh, the, the Roman authorities tried to describe the Christians in a letter to the emperor that's still extant from 117 A.D., you know what it said? It said, these people will miss a meal to help other peoples that are starving. These people will take in those who are without homes and bring them into their own homes even if they don't know them. These people will actually sell their possessions to buy their fellow Christians out of prison. It says they are so amazing in how they care for one another. Do you know what that is? That soundness in love. Do you know what we are obsessed with in America we love ourselves that's that's an American pastime we love ourselves we care for ourselves God helps those that help who themselves right we think that's in the Bible it, it is true that we are supposed to take care of ourselves but it also said Jesus said look not on your own things but also on the things of what others soundness in love means that we stay tender hearted in a cruel world you know the Good Samaritan story? How the worshipers on their way to worship God in Jerusalem were so busy on their way to get to the temple that there was a broken down traveler laying on the ground beside the road and they said, I can't stop, I'm going to be late to worship God. Hey, that goes on every Sunday, doesn't it? Aren't we late to church and someone has a flat tire and the kids all say, hey, look at those people. We go, huh, but we're going to be late for choir. Right? Isn't that how all of us are? I know for me, I, I, that Good Samaritan story really bothers me because it's really hard to stop our lives. And it's very easy not to be tender-hearted. Men that God is looking for have a tender heart and a cruel. Here's the last one before we go. Titus 2, two the last phrase says that we are supposed to be sound in patience. We are supposed to finish, hopefully, in a despairing world. Let me just tell you one thing before we go. Everybody in this room probably is going to die. Christ might come before all of us. I mean, it's possible, but, but for most people throughout all history, everybody has died. Only a few people have been raptured. Uh, you know, Enoch and Elijah, and the first fruits of the resurrection got to go up with Christ, and everybody else has died. So, let's go a step further. Everybody in this room sometime in your life is going to get cancer, respiratory problems, you're going to have heart problems, you're going to have uh, colon problems, you're going to have blood problems, you're going to have some kind of problems, or you're going to be in a horrible accident, or you're going to be crippled or something. Did you realize that? Now, don't let it be a shock to you. And it might happen when you're young. It might happen to you in the prime of your life. And do you know why we don't get depressed about life? Because we are sound in hope. We are knowing that our God is running everything in life, that He knows every day of our life, that He knows our frame that we're dust, and He knows what's best for us, and He's going to let us finish, and we should finish hopefully in a despairing world. Don't cling to life. Cling to Christ. Most people cling to life. And you'd think that this is all they have. We're supposed to be like campers in the world, like tenters. And we're not supposed to pound our tent stakes too deeply. Don't cling to life. Cling to Christ. What does God say that men are supposed to be? Maintaining a balanced life in an obsessive, compulsive world. Make sure that you don't have anything out of, out of balance in your life. You should have an older man in the faith talking to you about that. And then you ought to talk to the younger men in your life. You ought to get serious about life in an amused world. Make sure that you spend an equivalent time in amusement as you do in musing. In other words, if you're going to play video games for three hours a day, then chart out three hours a day to meditate on the Word of God. If you're going to uh, watch a, a two-hour movie, a DVD, then you ought to chart out two hours for personal worship and meditation. You say, you're crazy. No, I'm saying what's right. You're crazy for not doing it, because we're all going to stand before God. And He's going to say, what did you do with your life? And you say, man, I've got a collection of 500 videos, and I watched them all 30 times. You know, and I'm at this level in the video game. He'll go, great. And all of that will be burned up. Do you know why there are tears He wipes away at the judgment seat we're going to look at tomorrow? Because believers who were bought with the purpose of serving God, worshiping God, and making disciples spent so much of their time in amusements instead of musing. 
We're supposed to live a consistent life in a foolish world. Be temperate. We're supposed to guard a healthy mind. Don't let your mind be open to all those germs. Close it. Don't let that in. If God doesn't like bloodshed, don't watch gratuitous bloodshed. If God doesn't like witchcraft, don't watch witchcraft. Don't listen to singing about witchcraft, the occult. If God thinks that fornication is wrong, you shouldn't watch it in a movie or television. If God says it's always wrong to look at someone else's wife's body, then you can't even look through the window of the television at somebody else's wife's body. Do you ever think that movies, PG-13 movies, they have what they call partial nudity, which means from the waist up. Nudity from the waist up is partial, so it's okay for 13-year-olds and up. Did you know that in America, it used to be people that looked through windows at other people that, that did not know they were watching them, that that was called a peeping Tom and you could be arrested for that. But now if you pay $6 and the window happens to be 60 feet wide and 14 feet high, it's okay. It's never been okay with God. And God says we should guard a healthy mind. We should stay tender-hearted in a cruel world and we should finish hopefully. The eyes of the Lord are running to and fro tonight looking for men whose hearts are completely toward God.